Hi students, today we're going to go over Unit 3, Module 3, Session 2, Decimal Practice. Number 1 says to fill in the blanks to convert the units in each problem below. The following information may help you. 1 gigabyte is equal to 1,000 megabytes, 1 megabyte is equal to 1,000 kilobytes, and 1 kilobyte is equal to 1,000 bytes. So A says 9 kilobytes equals how many bytes? Well, it says right here, 1 kilobyte is equal to 1,000 bytes, therefore 9 kilobytes is equal to how many bytes? The answer is 9,000, because it would be 9 times 1,000. 9 times 1,000 is 9,000. B says 43 kilobytes equals how many bytes? What would be the answer? That's right, 43,000. C says 9 and 6 tenths kilobytes is how many bytes? Well, if we know 9 kilobytes is 9,000, what would 6 tenths be? 600, that's right. So 9 and 6 tenths kilobytes would be 9,600. D says 8 megabytes is how many kilobytes? And so we have to think, hmm, 1 megabyte equals 1,000 kilobytes. Therefore, 8 megabytes is how many kilobytes? Again, we're taking times 1,000. So the answer is 8,000. And then E says 41 megabytes equals how many kilobytes? So again, we're multiplying by 1,000. So the answer is 41,000. Megabytes to kilobytes is again the next one. And so if I know that 8 megabytes is 8,000 kilobytes, how many kilobytes is 7 megabytes? That's right, 7,000. And then the 3 tenths megabytes is 300. So the answer here is 7,300. Looking at G, 7 gigabytes is how many megabytes? So now we're moving from to gigabytes to megabytes. Look up here, one gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes. So seven gigabytes is how many megabytes? And the answer is 7,000. And so again, the next one says 56 gigabytes is how many megabytes? Multiplying by 1,000. So the answer is 56,000. Again, from gigabytes to megabytes, so multiplying by 1,000. Two, meg two gigabytes would be 2,000 megabytes. The four tenths would be how many megabytes? 400. So we have 2,400 as our answer. And then 16 megabytes equals how many bytes? Okay, so this is a little tricky one. We're going from megabytes to bytes. So here we see one megabyte is 1,000 kilobytes, and one kilobyte is 1,000 bytes. So we need to multiply by 1,000 and then by 1,000 again. So what is 1,000 multiplied by 1,000? That's right, 1 million, because we're thinking that there's going to be six zeros. So what number has six, six zeros in it? That is 1 million. So 16 times 1 million would be 16 million bytes. That's the correct answer. So continuing on our page, down here at number two, round each decimal number to the nearest whole number. So when we're rounding decimal numbers to the nearest whole, we want to round to just the ones place, the nearest whole number. So we're going to look to the right of the number to the tenths place. We know that if it's five or more, it goes up. Four or less, the number stays the same. Four or less, it stays the same. So when I look to the right of five, I see three. Is that four or less or five or more? It's four or less. And so the five is gonna stay the same. And so the answer to round to the nearest whole number just equals five. Looking here, look to the right of the des right of the of the place value that you're rounding, you're rounding to the nearest whole number, look to the right, we see an eight. It's five or more. So what happens to the six? It goes up one, so it becomes seven. And so we round to 17. And then looking at 21 and 25 hundredths, we look to the right of this one's place value, we see a two. And so we know that this one is going to stay the same. 
And so our nearest whole number is 21. Looking at number three, round each number to the nearest tenth. And so now we're looking at the tenth place value rounding here. Now we look to the right one, and we're, so we're gonna look at the hundredths place value. And we see that here it's a five, so that eight is gonna become a nine. So our answer is eight and nine tenths. Looking here to the right, we see a nine. So again, that's five or more. So the zero is gonna be increased by one to become one. So the answer is 12 and one tenth. We look to the right, we see a five. Five or more goes up, so the one becomes a two. So our answer here is 102 tenths. Now we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So we're gonna underline the hundredths place value in each number and look to the right five or more, the number it goes up by one. If you notice, all of our other digits stay the same. The only number that's rounded is our hundredths place value. So 36 and 31 hundredths. Here we have three and, oh, be careful here. If the nine goes up by one, it becomes a 10. So really what happens to this four in this tenth place value? All right, it's become a five. So three and 49 hundredths becomes three and 50 hundredths. Looking at number five, add or subtract the decimals. So in addition, we're going to use the give or take method, or strategy, sorry. In subtraction, we're gonna use the constant difference. So again, those two strategies we talked about in class were give and take or constant difference. Give or take is for addition, and then the constant difference is for subtraction. Because we hear that name, we hear that word difference, and we know difference is in subtraction. So the first one we see addition, so we're gonna use the give or take strategy. And so I'm thinking, what can I give to four and seven, eight hundreds to make this problem easier to calculate? I'm gonna, I want this number to become five holes. So what do I need to add to four and seven, eight hundreds to get to five holes? 78 plus what equals 100? And the answer is 22. So I'm gonna add 22 hundreds here. And it's give or take. So I'm giving four and seven, eight, I'm giving 22 hundreds to four and seven, eight hundreds. I need to take this from, from two and three hundredths. So now I'm thinking, what is two and three hundredths? Subtract 22 hundredths. And so I know that that is one and 81 hundredths. So now I can go back to solve the addition problem. What's one and 81 hundredths plus five holes? And the answer is six and 81 hundredths. So looking at the next problem, we see it's subtraction, therefore we use the constant difference. So I'm thinking what can I add to both numbers or what can I subtract to make this problem easier to solve? And so I know it's gonna be easiest to solve when my subtrahend or the number that I'm subtracting is going to end like in zeros. So how can I make this a whole number? Three and 98 hundredths Right, the whole number's gonna become four. So I'm gonna add two hundredths here, and that's gonna become four holes. And so then I'm gonna go ahead and add the two hundredths up here. Constant difference is just moving on the number line, the two numbers, by the same distance, by two hundredths. And so this becomes five and three hundredths. Now I can easily subtract, and I can see that that answer is one and three hundredths. So now that we've seen the give or take or constant difference strategy, maybe you also know that these subtraction problems or addition problems can also be solved just by vertical calculations. So let's look here at 25 and 67 hundredths, adding 14 and 32 hundredths. Seven plus two is nine, six plus three is nine, five plus four is nine, two plus one is three. The decimal goes straight now down in between the two nines, so the answer is 39 and 99 hundredths. And then we subtract right here. 
Now here we see, ooh, that's not going to be very pretty. We're going to do a lot of borrowing. So this is where the constant difference or give or take would be most beneficial. Because here maybe I want to move this. I want to add 25 hundredths here. And then I'm going to add 25 hundredths here. So then our new problem becomes, so what's 96 and 75 hundredths plus 25 hundredths? That's right, 97 holes. And then our 100 becomes 125 hundredths. And so now I'm subtracting, and what do I see as the answer? 25 hundredths minus zero is 25 hundredths. 100 take away 97 is three. Therefore our answer is three and 25 hundredths. Number six says, Isabella is building a tree fort. The base of the board fort is 78 inches wide by 92 inches long. What is the area of the base in square inches? Show your work. So we have our area of our base that is 92 inches by 78 inches. And I'm going to multiply. So several different ways we can multiply here. One way, 78 times 92 is by our standard multiplication algorithm. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Hold the place value. 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 7 is 63, plus 7 is 70. And I'm going to add these two partial products, and you see I get 6, 7, 1, 7. And so the area is 7,176 square inches, or inches squared. And the challenge says, what is the area of the base in square feet? Show your work. And so for calculating square feet, I need to think how many inches are in a foot. So how many inches are in a foot? That's right, 12. Okay, so when I'm looking at the area of the base in square feet, I can, I can look at both of these numbers, 78 inches and 92 inches, the dimensions of my base of my fort, and I can put those into feet by dividing both these numbers by 12. I could do that, or I could simply take my area and I'm not going to divide it by simply by 12. I'm going to divide it by 12 by 12 because that's the area. You see it's inches squared. So 12 times 12 I know is 144 inches squared. So I can take 7,176, divide that by 144. And the answer is 49 and 83 hundredths square feet. We will talk more about division soon in class. So that's just a challenge problem. If you got it, great. If not, totally okay. That's all for today.